GPUs are hard to come by in 2022. Not only did we just go through a massive cryptocurrency bubble, we're also in the midst of a global pandemic which has strained the supply chain. This has left many of us thirsty for PC upgrades, but unable to afford one of the most necessary parts of your system. However, CPUs have become so incredibly cheap, you can get excellent value parts for just over $100. It's incredible how far we've come, and I'm excited to discuss some CPUs to look out for in early 2022. Spoiler alert, Intel dominates the list. Before we get into this video, I'd like to take a moment to say not to forget to leave a like and subscribe, and comment if there's something you think I missed in this video. If there is some information that you feel I should have covered, then commenting or joining the community discord is one of the best ways to get in touch. Now without any further ado, let's dive into some CPUs to look out for if you're a budget gamer. Number 1. The i5-12400 This is actually a recent release in terms of Intel's CPU lineup, and comes with 6 cores and 12 threads clocked anywhere between 2.5 to 4.4 GHz. It features the Golden Cove cores, which feature 10 execution ports, and come socketed in the LGA1700, meaning that it's compatible with both B660 and B690. It costs $180 new though, but it comes with a warranty so it's kinda hard to pass up. Either way, it's an Alder Lake chip for $180, which is pff, really hard to complain about. Up next is the i3-12100, another Golden Cove based chip that sports 4 cores and 8 threads. This chip comes clocked between 3.3 to 4.3 GHz, which is kind of a wide range, but once again comes socketed in LGA1700. It's compatible with B660, and that's one of the boards that I would actually recommend to get with this chip, and comes in at $110 new, and comes with a warranty. Up next is the i5-10400, a 6-core 12-threaded chip clocked between 2.9 to 4.3 GHz. It features the Skylight cores with 8 execution ports, and is printed on 14 nanometer plus plus, so take that as you will. It comes socketed in LGA1200, which means it's compatible with B460 and B560 boards, which are getting relatively cheap now. It comes in at $155 new, which is once again very hard to argue with, and comes with a warranty. Up next is the i7-9700K, an 8-core 8 8-threaded 8 chip clocked between 3.6 and 4.9 GHz. It comes socketed in LGA1151, and to be honest, Z390 and Z370 boards are getting kind of cheap now. The only downside is the price of this particular chip coming in at $250 on eBay. It doesn't come with a warranty, but it's much cheaper. This is one of the chips that I would actually recommend to look out for if you're looking to start a budget workstation. It's got 8 physical cores, which is more than any of the chips on this list, but it does come with only 8 threads, so keep that in mind. You give some, and you take some. Really not that big of a deal though. Up next is the i3-10100, or the i3-10100. This is another 4-core 8-threaded chip coming in clocked at 3.6 to 4.3 GHz. This is another Skylake-based chip, and pretty much mirrors the i7-7700K, even with the 14 nanometer. It comes socketed in LGA-1200, and once again is compatible with the cheaper B460 and B560 boards. It's $115 new, it comes with a warranty, and I will say though, compared to the 12100, I would much rather get the 12100 even though the motherboards are a bit more. Get one of the cheaper DDR4 boards for Alder Lake and you are golden. Number 6 is the Ryzen 5 5600G. What's kind of interesting about this processor is it actually comes with integrated graphics. It's a 6 core 12 threaded chip clocked between 3.9 to 4.4 GHz and features Zen 3 cores and Vega compute units. Zen 3 cores come with 11 execution ports per core and are printed on 7 nanometer, so it's relatively efficient and relatively powerful. It comes socketed in the AM4 board and costs $250 new. Once again, this comes with a warranty though, but compared to some of the offerings from Intel, even though the integrated graphics are relatively weak on those chips, the Intel chips are cheaper and the boards are much more tantalizing in terms of price. AM4 maintains some pretty long-term compatibility, but what I will say is that Intel's power delivery over the years has gotten much better. 
Now the last chip we're going to keep an eye out for is the Ryzen 5 3600. This is a 6 core 12 threaded chip clocked between 3.6 to 4.2 GHz. It's a Zen 2 core meaning you get 8 execution ports and 7 nanometer based transistors. It comes socketed in AM4 as well and costs $200 on eBay. AM4 ports are getting kind of cheap now especially some of the older ones but I will say keep an eye out for them because they are definitely a steal. Now let's go ahead and get into some of my opinions. What do I think and which chip would I buy if I were in the market for a budget CPU? Well, to be honest, I would probably go for Alder Lake just for the single threaded performance. My machine at home is more or less a workstation that games as well. And to be honest, I've noticed that with single threaded chips, things like Photoshop or specifically GIMP in my case and DaVinci Resolve run significantly faster even if you have 8 plus cores. I think it's also kind of interesting, uh, to be honest, I would go also for one of the Ryzen chips, because, interestingly enough, it supports like 5 generations of processors, which is kind of nuts, but at the end of the day, it's just one of the value plays from AMD. So, which one would I go for realistically? Well, once again, I would go for the Alder Lake chip just because it's newer and it's actually kind of cheaper compared to the Ryzen 5 5600G. If you want comparable performance from AMD, it's actually going to cost you more because the node is more efficient. However, on Intel, even though it's still based on 10 nanometer enhanced superfin, realistically it's really not that important and a lithographic node isn't really as important as a lot of people think. Sure it's important, but at the end of the day, if you have a 14 nanometer chip compared to a 7 nanometer chip, and you didn't do anything except showed them performance, didn't even show them power draw or anything, you probably wouldn't notice that much. Unless you sit there and benchmark games, which, at that point, have fun, I guess. But either way, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And click the bell icon so you'll be notified when all the videos are posted. Once again, I'd like to shout out the community Discord and also the Patreon. For those of you who don't know, I actually have a Patreon, and even though I'm not super active on it, if people do want to start supporting me on there, I will definitely start posting more content on there. If you notice lately, I have been posting more videos, it's because I actually have these videos saved up. I've been releasing them over the past maybe three or four days. So if you're enjoying that and want to see this continue, please go ahead and go over there and support me on there. Or if you can't, just join the community discord and say what's up. Really all I have to say on the matter, so thank you for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.